Hello, and welcome to Casual Shenanigans, episode 26. We've made it to a quarter hundred, guys. Um, Yay. Yay. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm one of your hosts, Jerem Gaming. Uh, I am joined by my co-host, Chris. Hey, guys. Uh, Dave. Hey, folks. I am Dave, the not-so-evil, evil Viking 13. And Steve. Howdy. And Dave, hopefully everyone will be able to hear this, especially on the audio portion of the podcast. Uh, what is significant for you this evening? Well, hello, everyone. Yes. <laughs> I have finally bought a boom for my microphone, and I was just explaining, it's really obnoxious how I had it before. I had this like little triangle stand and a pot filter attached to my desk, so my mic was actually on my desk surface in front of my keyboard, so to like hit my function keys... I had to like hug my microphone and reach around it. And I've been dealing with that for 10 months now because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> Again, it's not being a cheapskate. It's like, hmm, could I use 10 minutes of problem solving to put this somewhere else? <laughs> a <No>. bitterly <laughs> determined cheapstay- cheapskate. <laughs> I think Actually, stubbornness I, I, factors into this somewhere. <laughs> I, uh, I tried a few different spots, but the problem is I've got so much noise from the air conditioner in here and the, the fan noise that... That was the closest spot to my mouth while still on the desk. Yeah, you guys, you guys sucked. don't know how much noise is in his house. Like every time I get his mic feed, I use the newest version of Adobe Audition with like the best noise canceling stuff you can possibly use, pretty much, and it makes it okay, but it's still not good. <laughs> like it's still, it sounds like a jet is taking off behind him <laughs> when I get the stock audio feeds. The great part is, Jeremiah, I was watching one of your Daisy videos, like a few clips from one of the episodes you put up, uh, I think it was last week, and whenever I would hit alt for push to talk, to talk, you you could tell I'm about to talk because you hear like a bzzz, and then oh, I start yeah, talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time it's like, wow. <laughs> 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 Not that that's immersion breaking or anything, but... It's either that or my computer catches on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, um, <laughs> welcome to the podcast, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Let's start the podcast with the news. Um, Alright, Valve released the specs of the 300 beta Steam machines. Chris and Steve, you haven't been on the podcast in a couple of weeks. Are you up to speed on the Steam machines? Yeah, mainly. <laughs> Alright, so for Steve and everyone else uh, <laughs> No, just real briefly I've, I've read about them, okay Okay, okay, okay <laughs> Valve is gonna uh, put out these 300 beta Steam machines To some of the luckiest people in the world uh, they'll, they'll be running early versions of Steam OS The computers themselves, they're just PCs um, But they've released the specs And the specs had like GTX 660s, 760s, 770s, 780s And Titans And all Intel processors And so that was like all Intel and NVIDIA stuff So, um People were wondering where Steam Machines going to be NVIDIA and Intel only, but they have confirmed that Steam Machines will support Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA graphics because they're normal PCs, which Valve keeps saying, and people keep pretending like there's some super special magical <laughs> computer. But they're Valve but made PCs. It's like a console, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it must be locked down. <laughs> Although, like, they've released their specs for it, like the physical specs, and it's supposed to be like three inches high. I'm not sure where they're going to stick a Titan. But it must be a Titan without a shroud that's like on a liquid cooler or something, because mm-hmm. that sounds like a recipe for a house fire. PC Gamer <laughs> did some mock-ups where they had like kind of the stuff they talked about on a motherboard. It's going to take some reworking, but it'll be interesting. It's a good fat form factor for the living room, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't think I'll buy one just because they're probably going to be hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but I'll probably put together a Steam machine out of like old spare parts just to run Steam OS in big picture mode. I would be super interested in playing with that controller uh in my living room have you guys seen the video of the guy using the controller oh yeah, yeah. i yeah, want it, it i want it, it right now i i know that he probably practiced like 30 times before he did the video and that might be the 10th take or something but um it looked good like it, it wasn't as good as a mouse and keyboard but it looked way more precise than any controller i've ever used i just beat grand theft auto 5 and i spent the entire like 35 hour story groaning at the horrible shooting controls and they're horrible even with auto aim like it's still bad anytime you want to get somebody you're just going hey. isn't that how real firefights work <laughs> <laughs> suppressive fire is your friend <laughs> um what are the stats that the average police shooting their accuracy like is something 40, like it's like 40 bullets discharged three hit or something yeah their their hit ratio was, is like six and a half percent for the police <laughs> 
There was a story well, like, on NPR the other morning about some guy they were shooting at, and it was they killed him. So sad story, or I don't know what he was doing, but they shot like a hundred and forty times. They reported on that. <laughs> well, guy down. Do you remember last year where in um in L.A. there was that cop killer on the loose, that ex cop who wrote like the big. Dorner, um, yeah. Dorner, yeah. He wrote the big expose on the LAPD about how apparently they're corrupt, horrible people. According to him. What? According to him. Madness. And then he, um, then he went on a rampage, you know, trying to kill them. Uh, and so the police were understandably a little bit on edge. But they are also, it appears, a lot of them are kind of un- incompetent in LA. Because uh, he, he had like a gray pickup truck. And they saw a dark colored pickup truck driving along the street early in the morning it turned out to be a totally different make of pickup truck that was a different color that was being driven by an, a lady and her elderly mother delivering newspapers <laughs> you would think the police would like stop the vehicle no they cornered it and opened fire on it because obviously <laughs> in la there's only one dark colored pickup truck out at night the great point uh, is we don't even do that in a rack <laughs> like you don't just corner a vehicle and open fire have on drones, it. we have drones for that um, oh, but they, they fired, like, I think it was close to a hundred rounds from like seven different police officers shooting from all different angles at this truck and both occupants lived, like they got hit once or twice, but they lived and were fine after a couple days. Yeah. It was like minor injuries. <laughs> and like, how do you hit a, pick, how to hit a pickup truck that many times and miss the people in it? It's a pickup truck, not a cargo van. <laughs> I laugh so hard because one of the women's injuries, she was injured by glass. Like that was her injury. <laughs> I mean, it's a sad story, but anyway, I don't know where we were going with this. Accuracy. and Accuracy. Con- also, yes. controllers are terrible. Console so, controllers. controllers. Console controllers. If the LAPD had had auto-aim, they might have been able to kill those ladies easy. No, I don't think that's the point. <laughs> or if they had a mouse. Just saying. <laughs> if they had a mouse and keyboard, they'd be dead. Alright. <laughs> um, Far Cry 4, likely already in development. Uh, not a big surprise. Far Cry 3 came out and everyone loved it and it sold tons and tons of copies and they already confirmed that they've greenlit a sequel. But uh, composer Cliff Martinez let slip during an interview that he's working on the game's soundtrack. His other composing credits include Drive and Only God Forgives, so we can expect Far Cry's soundtrack to be pretty unique. Far Cry 3's was pretty good. Um, did either of you, any of you guys see Drive? No. No. Oh, no one's seen Drive. Okay. Is that a movie? <laughs> yeah, it's a movie with Ryan Gosling. Oh, I don't um, see movies. <laughs> Remember the cheapskate thing? Yeah. <laughs> you have Netflix. That's true. I do have Netflix. Yeah. Because it's, it's eight be like, bucks a month. I don't know, I don't know anything about movies. We don't go see movies that often either. Like a couple times a year. But there are other ways to watch movies. And you can- <laughs> I wouldn't know about such things. <laughs> so, do, you, do you recommend Drive, Jeremiah? Um... It's it's not like a straight up action movie. If you want a little bit of art in your action movie, you might like it. You might just think it's weird. It's one of those type of movies. I thought it was pretty good. Um, the yeah. soundtrack's definitely pretty good. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it. I haven't okay. seen Only God Forgives, but anyway, the soundtrack was good, so we can expect the soundtrack to Far Cry Four. It was very unique. Um, it should be good. So that's cool. Um, the basic functions of the PlayStation 4's controller will work by default in Windows supposedly sony says they will uh analog stick movements and button presses should work just fine there's no word on force feedback or the touch screen um or joel's coveted share button um <laughs> for that emotional connection to but your friends. the the thing is controllers i forget what they use it's some sort of um some sort of format that uh some sort of format that the controllers use to interface in windows and uh, PS4 doesn't support that natively, so they've got to run like some software hack or something. But supposedly Mouse it'll, emulation, it'll work. basically. I don't honestly know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so but it'll give people an option who, like me, I had a PlayStation 3, but I have an Xbox 360 controller to use on my PC when I need a controller. Um, and yeah, I got used to it. It's not a big deal. But if you really prefer the PlayStation 4 controller, you should be able to use it. Nice. Uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto V has collected seven world records following its release. Uh, they are as follows. Is the Most best-selling... hookers murdered. <laughs> <laughs> best-selling action-adventure video game in 24 hours. Best-selling video game in 24 hours. Fastest entertainment property to gross $1 billion. Man. That was th- three days. Fastest video game to gross $1 billion. Highest grossing video game in 24 hours. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is between that and best-selling. I guess best-selling is units. Highest-grossing is money. 
Um, yeah. Highest revenue generated by an entertainment product in 24 hours. Most viewed oh. trailer for an action adventure video game. So. <laughs> That's, wow, that, that last one was kind of like a, a letdown after the rest. It's like, <laughs> we, we we got YouTube views, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, obviously, it, it sold better than pretty much any, anything, but... Um, so that means it, it, beat, it beat Call of Duty then by quite oh, a lot, right? By a ridiculous amount. Wow, um, man. Now, Activision is talking some smack, like they're going to take it back with Call of Duty Ghosts, but I don't think so. I think Call of Duty is coming to That's what they're end. putting out there to beat Grand Theft Auto V is, is Ghosts? <laughs> uh, I, I, think, I think that's mostly smoke. Um, Watch yeah. Dogs has been delayed. Uh, yeah, it's going to be that. coming out early next year. They say they want to take time and polish it. I'm totally fine with that. There are tons of cool games to play. Um... It kind of sucks for people who pre-ordered a Watchdog bundle for their new console. <laughs> I think that's what Joel. I think Joel did Watchdogs actually for his bundle. Or no, no, a no, no Amazon actually said that they're going to fulfill the orders for the Playstations and then ship the game gotcha. as soon as it comes into stock. That's so they're actually honoring for people it. who wanted to have like a game on day one. I guess they have to go order <laughs> something else. But not yep. Joel. Another friend of mine is ordering a PS4. He ordered a bundle. Um, but whatever. Anyway, it should be good. Um, you know, they're delaying it, although they're delaying it, like, at least a couple months, so it's interesting, it remains to be seen, like, is something wrong with the game, or do they just want to polish it? I mean, Grand Theft Auto was delayed, and it was probably worth it, because it was pretty polished, um, yeah. for a release game, but... My views have really changed on, del on like, delays. It used to be, I was all about pre-ordering and, and watching every trailer that came out, and every delay was, like, a personal offense, but now... When I see a delay, I'm like, yeah, that's a good thing. I'm actually more happy about delays now just because almost always it's a good thing. Yeah, and I've, I've got so many games to play. It's not like, oh, man, <laughs> I so needed this one. It's like, no, realistically, you know, I play like five that's... or six story games a year <laughs> and the rest of it's multiplayer. So it's not that big of a rush. That's a great point, too, is that I no longer am like stuck on I have to have this game so I have something to play. It's like, well, time to work on that library for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's not I mean being a PC gamer is great because you can just wait until Watch Dogs is four dollars and pick it up then. Like I'm not gonna run out of stuff to play. So eight months then. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um okay we have oh no one more thing. Um not to just dog on consoles all the time. Consoles. <laughs> but Killzone Shadowfall, supposed to be one of those things really showing off the power of the next generation consoles. It can handle 24 enemy AI before the frame rate goes to crap. <laughs> On the PS3, they can handle 7, but they've knocked it all the way up to 24. It doesn't say if it'll be running in 1080p or 720, but so far, I'm that's not, not really good. impressed. <laughs> yeah, I'm not impressed. If they're not saying at this point, uh, that's not good. Uh, it's already BF4 is going to be running, I think, at 720p. A lot of games are going to be running at 720p, so... Yeah, that's what happened with BF4 is everyone's like, well, they're saying 60 FPS, but they're not talking about resolution. Like, what does that mean? And, of course, that meant 720p when it finally came yep. out. Yep. Whatever. We've said enough. Joel's not here to defend it, so I don't want to kick a sick puppy. Um, still gonna look good compared to what they're used to oh definitely like they're gonna look great and everything but for they're talking about 1080p everything this is the future it's like well not yeah. really on the note of um of, of consoles and, and marketing and talking about resolutions have you guys heard the rumors that microsoft and sony are being incredibly strict about multi-platform titles and marketing right now i did not know that um i, I really can't cite anything because it's because i've seen it from a few different places but basically there's a rumor going around that Developers who are making multi-platform platform games, including games like Battlefield 4, cannot push their best platform too much. They kind of have to advertise evenly because, obviously, even next-gen consoles aren't going to be able to match a $3,000 gaming rig running DirectX 11, Windows 8, just totally cranked out. So, or a $1,000 gaming rig. Or a $1,000 gaming rig. And, one. Yeah, it puts the developers in a really awkward place where they have to like really talk up the new consoles and be like, "Oh yeah, the PC version is pretty good too." <laughs> like when when in reality, like from a technical perspective, is obviously a superior product. There, I th yeah, I think Dice said something that was it today or yesterday. Um, they said they wouldn't scale Battlefield down like they, to make the same product across all their platforms. Someone yep. asked them like, "Why is it the same?" And they were like, "Uh, because we can make it better here, so we're gonna make it better. Why wouldn't you?" And I laugh because it was that um, was that the, was it Lars? Is he the lead producer of Battlefield? I don't remember who said it. I can't remember his full name at the moment, but I I believe he said something like, 
Like, why do I have to defend this? Like, why is this an issue that we're making it the best we can for each individual platform? Like, guys, these are different things. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, before we continue on topics for the evening, uh, Dave, do you have that computer build ready? Totally not. <laughs> uh, I, in all you... seriousness, t today was my Friday, and I, I, didn't, I didn't leave work until 7 o'clock tonight. So. <laughs> oh, you're off work tomorrow? Uh, yes, I have a wedding rehearsal tomorrow. Oh, I'm cool. Part of, so. I, um, normally, I'm off on Fridays, but we have a conference this weekend, so I'm working Friday and Saturday. Ouch. So I'm kind of bummed about that. But anyway, yeah, I have no build for matters. you, sorry. Okay, we'll see if you can throw something together in like five minutes. Yep. Um, so, we got a question. Someone wrote in to casual shenanigans at gmail.com, just like you can, dear listener. <laughs> and um, they had a question about a build. So this is Dan. Hey, whoever is reading this, probably Germ. Dang straight. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to ask you guys if you could talk on the podcast about a mid to high range PC that I could possibly build in the next four to five months. I would like to use it a lot for gaming, possibly streaming and video editing as my laptop isn't cutting it anymore. I'd like it to come under the $900 mark because as I'm from England, it should come to about 850 pounds. If you could get one to the $700 mark, that would be even better. I don't really know a lot about AMD cards and Nvidia seem just seem to work better from what people have said, but then again, I'm not really sure. Sorry for making this message really long. I just thought I'd make it as detailed as possible, but that's about it. P.S. Keep up the podcast and video guys. They're really awesome. Stay casual, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Um, thank you for your kind words. And now, stay casual. <laughs> uh, embrace it. Um, uh. So before I give you the list, I came up with a list and uh, Dave's going to give you a list in just a minute or yep. a couple minutes. Um, don't laugh, but I actually have like 19 different builds spec'd out oh, at all too. times. I totally do. Yeah, so I've got builds ready to go. I'm just modifying one. Give me about three minutes here. <laughs> all right, the build I put together does not include a copy of Windows because you. I don't know if you have a spare copy or if you're a student, you get a copy or something like that. <clears throat> I built right at $700 because I did not include Windows. I didn't include a mouse, keyboard, or monitor because I don't know if you have any of that stuff. So if you wanted that for absolutely everything, let me know and we can try to spec it out again. But th uh, this build is just for the physical computer itself, $700. Now, uh, I went with AMD for the CPU and the video card. Um, I think in this price bracket, AMD is going to be your best option. Um, but I do look forward to seeing what Dave has. But this is what I would do. Um, I'd get an AMD FX 8320. That's an eight core processor running at 3.5 gigahertz. It's really the same processor as the 8350. It's just clocked lower. Uh, the, I would then get an ASRock 990FX Extreme 3 motherboard. And I'm going to put this uh, link to the PC part picker list into the comments for this video. Or not the comments, in the description for this video. Um, so if you're listening to the audio version of this, definitely go check it out on the channel and, and get this list. But um, an ASRock 990FX. Um, that'll let you overclock it and you should be able to get this processor to like 4.5 gigahertz, which will really get you a lot of extra headroom there. Um, eight gigs of memory, nothing major there. Uh, Western Digital Caviar Blue 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM internal drive for only like 20 bucks more. You could get that up to a terabyte or a two terabyte if you want a slower one. Um, I just don't know how much storage space you need. So that can be swapped out based on your needs. Um, for the video card, I went with a Sapphire Radeon HD 7950. Um, I have two of them in my computer. Um, the thing about NVIDIA cards seeming to work better, AMD has had a bad track record with Crossfire drivers and drivers in general. But really, I've been using AMD cards since 2009, and I really haven't had that many problems. Like, I, I don't think I have any more problems than anyone else does. Um, the only real problems I had were was the Battlefield 4 beta Um it ran horribly on Crossfire, but that's a beta. I mean, they released yeah. patches near the end that made it a lot better. So I, I wouldn't count that. I had that, the same but... problem with my driver, and I'm not even running SLI. So yeah, it's it's just that. And I'm running Nvidia. I feel very confident about running Crossfire. Um, and I have two Sapphire 7950s. I love them. Um, it's two hundred and ten dollars. I would posit that you cannot get a better, more graphics performance for two hundred and ten bucks than a 7950 with a little bit of overclocking. My single card was within spitting distance of Dave's GTX 680. It definitely wasn't as fast, but it was close enough that I don't think I could justify spending twice as much to get a used 680 or, or GTX 770. Um, I mean, definitely, it's not twice the performance. So uh, for, since you're kind of on a budget, I'd get a 7950. Um, and then, and, and I had a FX 8350. 
up until I got my, my Intel processor. And with that and 17950, I could play everything. I went to an Intel just because it got me better performance in Arma and Daisy, <clears throat> but I could still play everything. Yeah, um, if you are for, if you are interested in an Nvidia card, I recently just bought a 660 Ti. The 760 is also out now, but um, that would be a comparable card at the same price, just on the other yes. side of the fence. Are the 660 Ti's are they down to the 200 mark now? If you get them on sale, they're actually sale. they actually okay. went up a little bit. The MSRP just because they're not making them anymore. Gotcha. Um, so like they're actually at about 260, but if you get a sale, you can get them about 200. Okay, and that that would be a very comparable card. The only advantage I would say the 7950 has is it overclocks really really well. Stock, it's an okay card. I mean, oh, well, it's good. It's very good for the money. But if you overclock it, that's where you really start getting like the 30% performance boost. Um, and overclocking it is not hard. Um, with all these parts, I'm assuming you're going to overclock some. All these parts are easy to overclock. You don't need to do anything extreme. Just a nice mild overclock to, uh, you'll get, you know, you overclock the processor and the video card. You could easily scrape another 30% of performance out of this. And that's worth it in your price bracket. Um, the power supply is just a Corsair 500 watt, nothing special. The case is a Corsair 200R. It's only a $50 case, but I actually replaced my Antec 900 with this, and um, I love it. I've done a couple builds in this case for people. It's a $50 case, no frills, but it works really, really well. Has front panel USB 3, is high quality, easy to build in. I mean, $50 cases have gotten way better. Um, and then just an LG DVD burner. The whole thing comes to $703, so I'd say that's pretty good. Not bad at all, huh? Yeah, it's not bad at all. But and that's the the bottom end of your of your price range. And if you need a monitor and stuff, obviously that goes up. So that's an AMD centric build. Dave, what do you have for us? Got one more link to add here. Um, I'm just a little bit over the what was it nine hundred mark, right? Yeah. All right. So you're going to be the top end here. Yeah, Intel is definitely and and Nvidia too is is starting to push the budget a bit. And as far as graphics cards go, I'm kind of going back and forth on um on the cards. It may be worth actually looking up. A, uh, a refurbished or used NVIDIA card. I've had great luck with those. But, um, Jeremiah, how is the uh, GTX 760? Have you heard much about that card? The, the 760 is pretty much equal to the 7950. I mean, they, they kind of they trade back and forth. I would, I would say they're very comparable. The 760 is really a rebranded 660 Ti. For okay, more or less. gotcha. Um, it doesn't overclock quite as far, but it does overclock pretty well. Nice. Um, so I would say it's pretty comparable to the 7950. All right, let me fix this power supply, and then we will be good to go here. Could you right. uh, toss, toss me a link to the list so I could see it too? Yeah, how does uh, 870 total sound, US? That's not bad. I mean, that, that's closer to the upper end of his budget, but um, if the parts are way better, then, it, then you, know, you can decide. Maybe you save for an extra month or two. You're not building for four or five months. Maybe you can scrape together some more money. It'll just depend on yeah, what yeah. you want to get out of it. And there's definitely some room to uh, kind of go back and forth on this one. I'm going to drop a link for you guys right here into the chat. So what we have here is an i5-3570K, which is a pretty rocking CPU. I have one. Um, I approve. <laughs> of course, as far as budget coolers that are awesome, we're going with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. I have one. It's awesome. It's full of fantastic. <laughs> um, the motherboard actually might have some room right there to go back and forth. That was a board I already had for a different build, and I just grabbed it. I have um, that one. It's pretty good. <laughs> wait, do you have that actual board? <laughs> yes, I have that board, that, <laughs> that cooler, and that processor. I wonder if this is like leftovers computer. from me helping you spec out something. It's That'd be kind in of... my computer right now. <laughs> it's bringing this to you. <laughs> this computer is Jeremiah approved. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mushkin, 8 gigs of RAM, because I love Mushkin RAM. I'm just kind of a fanboy. You could probably go lower with the budget brand. No reason not to. Um, mm -hmm. Don't listen to me about my mushkinness. <laughs> well, RAM, RAM is one of those things where people talk about the RAM specs a lot more than I think it actually matters. Like, yeah, I went from, yeah. from 8 gigs of DDR2 uh, to 16 gigs of DDR3 and literally no performance increases <laughs> at all in anything. I mean, it's, I had more memory, which was nice, but there was no speed difference. So, you know, get, get a good quality RAM. Don't get cheap stuff, but right. don't stress about it too much. There are more important things in your build. Or if you want the cheap stuff, just find good reviewed cheap stuff because there are some yeah, really great yeah. cheap brands too. Um, For the graphics card, I have a Zotac GTX 760. Now, the problem is this card is like right standard price right now at 232 I bet you you can find it for 40 to 50 bucks less because that's just a very standard price for just like out the door from the factory. Look for a better deal on that. Uh, very basic uh, Corsair case, 60 bucks, nothing I'm fancy gonna, there. I'm going to challenge you on the case. 
Okay, please do because I I grabbed the first one I saw that was sixty bucks. Why, why a four hundred R instead of a two hundred R, which is fifty bucks? Like I said, that's the one I recommended. I have two seventy nine fifties, uh, five hard drives, one SSD, a big aftermarket cooler. My temps are great. It's quiet. Um, like and what I is have, this magical case called? Of course, they are two hundred R. Yes. All right. Use that one. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the four hundred R. It's sixty bucks. That's not a bad deal. You're going to get more features. Now, that's that's with the the promotion stuff. If you can't get it with the promotions for whatever reason, I wouldn't. At your yeah. in your budget range, I wouldn't pay an extra fifty bucks. But no, I'm sure the four hundred R is a is a nicer case. Um, again, yeah, but a, a lot of this, this is this is how I you, found Dan. it. I I went cases under seventy bucks. Sort by rating. First one I clicked on. <laughs> so there you have it. All right. Um, sorry, I, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. No, I, actually, I'm glad you pointed that out because, like I said, the case was just a throw-in. So, <laughs> please feel free. Um, once again, power supply, same thing. Corsair is a great brand. This is a, a good power supply. It's it's modular. It's awesome. Can I challenge you bucks. on this? <laughs> 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 um, so, so so why 600 watts? I'm just curious why 600 watts. I just always have overhead. Um, I bet you with the 600, you could probably do SLI. What do you think? You about might be that? able to. That's what I was wondering. I have a 650 Corsair. That's that's and, pushing it. You'd be well, you'd be right on the line if you wanted two seven sixties. Yeah, pe- people, yeah. you would be on the line. People say all the time though, like, oh, you need like seven hundred fifty watts minimum to do a crossfire or something. And when you look up when people like hook a power meter up to the wall and run like crossfire seventy nine seventies or something, <laughs> computers don't use nearly as much power. Like your computer is never pulling absolute peak power from yeah, every single thing in it, unless key. you're running a synthetic. So you can run my. According to people who've used power meters, my computer uh, with two seventy nine fifties is probably pulling like five eighty. Um, so if you if you want to do dual cards, yeah, the six hundred watt. I mean, it's only ten bucks more than a five hundred watt. There's nothing wrong. I'd with weigh it. in here too, actually, and say I'd yeah. back off the power supply, get something cheaper. I'd even think about backing off the graphics card because if you do anything other than gaming, I'd put a hundred dollar SSD in. Yeah. Actually, all right, yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that. I guess we don't really need to talk about the DVD burner. It's a $20 DVD burner. If you need one, get one. I mean, that's... <laughs> Light, Light On is the best budget brand. They're oh, no, no. so I, cheap. I like so Light On. Cheap. I use Light On in all the budget builds I do at work. But For I mean, my it's... last build, I didn't even buy one. I borrowed one from a friend to install Windows exactly. and then it's... removed it. <laughs> a lot of people don't even use them anymore. So, I mean, it's not, you know, if you, now, if you need one, get one. But um, Before yeah. we rag on my lack of, 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 of SSD, let me no, actually no, defend my decision. In this, in this price range, it makes sense. In this, in this, it's understandable for gaming. Just even in that price range, I'd yeah. probably jump for it. Well, here's my thought for SSDs, and this is just, just me because I can't ever let a build just sit there for more than six months without upgrading something. <laughs> so of, out of all the things that are True. easiest to, to move up to, adding an SSD is basically the easiest thing to upgrade. That's true. Yeah. Wait a um, year, get a nice 256 now, or something. That, yeah. yeah, I was going to say that because if the only really the SSD you're going to be able to afford in your budget range is a, is a 120 gig. And you are going to outgrow that. I mean, that's that's just how it is. Um, 120 is not going to last you for game for a bunch of games and productivity and stuff. Honestly, my 240, I could fill that up really quickly if I wasn't careful. Yeah. So, um, it's a good upgrade to make, but I guess I think I actually I'm going to disagree with Chris just because. In if this you're planning budget, on upgrading within a year, but right, it, it's an SSD is one of the best upgrades you can make yes. for just overall speed of yes. your pc it's very underrated i'm not discounting that at all the whole reason i'm a little in eh is i've run games off mechanical hard drives quite a few times actually battlefield runs off I still a mechanical do. one i yeah, still run most of my games off mechanical because i'm on a 128 but yeah they they run fine um i'm just thinking like where would you pull 80 bucks from this build that's my thing like where would you pull 80 90 bucks i mean you could drop it's hard because it. it's pretty light but right you could i mean you don't want you don't want a graphics card that cost 130 bucks that's no, gonna be i wouldn't i wouldn't pull it off from the graphics card i'd probably the way that i build most of my pcs is i purchase them over the course of a month or two gotcha. which is kind of hard but you get everything on sale you can save about a hundred dollars oh definitely yes. definitely uh, what you could do you could drop that 760 not to be plugging Nvidia again. If you drop down to a a seventy nine fifty, you could get for two hundred bucks. That saves you thirty bucks. You could drop that processor, maybe down to an AMD again. Not to be plugging AMD everywhere. I, but, I, I'd but, stick with the Intel. Well, the Intel's I think a great that's part. Worth it. Here's the problem with Intel, is their f- like first real enthusiast processor starts at two hundred ten bucks. It's a thirty five seventy. All of their cheaper processors don't overclock except for the dual cores. And I, I would not buy a dual core for gaming. 
anymore. No. Like they're they're competitive now, but if you want to keep this for the next five years or so, that that uh the a uh, dual core is just that's going away as far as for serious gaming applications. So I mean, what what like there's nowhere you can go lower with that processor unless you get a processor that won't overclock. And that 3570K is good at 3.4, but you're not getting anything out of it until you get it above 4. I mean, as far as its potential, um, I saw huge performance increases when I went above 4. I'm at 4.5. You can get to 4.5 gigahertz on that motherboard and that, with that cooler in two minutes. It's super easy. Going above that's very hard, but getting to that is super easy. Nice. So... Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to feel like I'm just like arguing over everybody's points or anything, but I like I really like talking about this stuff. And this is how we help people. We it argue is, it about is. it. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, it's so um, we can drop both of these links in uh, in the description of the video. Yes. Uh, assuming we remember. If we didn't remember, Dan, just let us know and we can pull them back up for you. But if you have any more questions, let us know. And same thing with any of you guys. As you can tell, we don't mind talking about computer builds. So. I think we've probably spent enough time on that one, though. <laughs> Tonight's podcast is for one person. <laughs> um, we are ready to move on to the BF4 beta. Now, Steve, I'd like to get your thoughts on the Battlefield 4 beta. Yeah, it looks a lot like Battlefield 3. <laughs> you didn't play it, did you, Steve? No, I didn't. I didn't. Why didn't you play it, Steve? My girlfriend was here from California. Oh, can all the married people on the podcast please raise their hands real quick? What's up, guys? Hey! hey. <laughs> we played it. Yeah, but you live in the same house as your wives. <laughs> That's true. That is a legitimate point. Chris, like probably... Chris, Chris only played it once. His girlfriend no, is here, No, I too, played it so... three times. <laughs> Chris could make fun of me because I'm sure I ditched him plenty of times in college to go spend time with my girlfriend. So I, I actually got brought survival rations at one point during the beta. I had like this really intense match going on that I was recording, and I hadn't eaten lunch yet. And like I was getting... like. Just like dizzy from hunger. I was so hungry. My wife is awesome and made me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield rations. <laughs> Understanding wives are very necessary wow. and, <laughs> and and very nice. Um, where are we going with this? So yeah, the BF4 beta ended. <laughs> Didn't the BF3 beta go all the way up to like right before release or did it in two no, weeks before? The BF3 beta was actually, uh, I believe, only like nine days or so. It was really short. Oh, hmm. I thought I remember and it was being longer. Really buggy too. It, oh yeah, yeah, the BF3 beta was horrible. It, it it ended actually, I think, almost a month before the release. It was right okay. at the end of September. Um, it started at the end of September. I remember because on my birthday, it w the beta was coming out, and right, so I told, right. I told everyone at work I lived like two miles from home. I was like, hey, at the time I did, and um, I said, hey, <laughs> when this thing drops, I'm I'm going home, and I'll be back later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I should have had just remote access set up. I don't know why I didn't, but yeah, probably yeah. so. Yeah, but uh, oh, oh, I, I gotta tell, I gotta tell Chris and Steve this. Hopefully, you'll appreciate this and not think I'm a total loser. <laughs> so we already crossed that line, Jeremiah. Let's just keep going. <laughs> we were visiting the beach about a month ago, visiting uh, Joel and Dave and a couple of other people at the beach, and um, on the way back, we had three breaking bad episodes to go like we were all caught up but it was the third to last one has everyone caught up on breaking bad i have yes. not seen 5.5 okay well there is big <laughs> stuff that happens in the ending episodes that's not really a spoiler and <laughs> <No>. um <laughs> and we like we knew it was going to be good so we were driving home and my wife said like we have to stay up and watch this i don't care if i'm tired at work tomorrow but the problem was like you know you got to download it so i uh i tethered my ipad to my phone, driving down the interstate. My wife was driving. <laughs> sorry, should have said that. Um, I, oh gosh! <laughs> I, I used log me in to remote into my desktop and start the download. So by the time we got home, it was ready to go. We are in the future, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. On a related quick I don't know, aside, awesome did is you... the right word. But thank you, Steve. <laughs> I, I think it's cool. <laughs> Did you guys see the guy who was heading home from college, like carpooling with a bunch of guys, and was playing Battlefield 3 on his laptop with a tethered cell phone in the back seat? I did not see that. He, his ping was only about 300, so it was playable. But the problem wow. was, when he would change cell phone towers, he'd drop his server connection for a minute. So it'd be like, three minutes of playing, drop connection. Three minutes of playing, drop connection. I'm sure his car mates loved him. Oh, yeah. 
That's dedication right there, guys. Now, well, how was he running power? Was he running off an inverter, like killing the car? Or... <laughs> Basically, I'm sure. Because if not, he had maybe an hour of battery life if he was lucky. Most Plus, all that, that wireless connection trying to run, that'd, that'd be oh, horrible. Yeah. So yeah, the Battlefield 4 beta ended recently, um, and... <laughs> to Steve's horror. Yeah. <laughs> based, on, based on... I didn't know. <laughs> That's all right. I loved his email today for the podcast. He's like, oh, I'm really looking forward to getting to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh no, Steve, oh no! <laughs> um, but yeah, they're making some changes based on the beta, which is nice. That's kind of how betas work. Um, they fixed... There's a bunch of low frame rate, stuttering, loading screen, CPU... CPU usage issues. The micro fixed. stutter and the CPU usage were definitely the worst bugs in my opinion. They were. They were. Yeah, my CPU Which was totally like throwing you off. Maxed out like a hundred percent, and I was stuttering everywhere. That wasn't that encouraging. Um, okay, so they've reduced the fire rate of the AK-12 in burst from a thousand rounds per minute to seven hundred and fifty. They decided that it was kind of overpowered. Um, I would agree with that. The gun had very low recoil and very fast rate of fire, so it was a really awesome starter gun. It was a laser pointer of death. Yeah. Um, they tweaked the compensator and the muzzle brakes so they're less accurate in sustained automatic fire. They reduced and rebalanced the full auto accuracy based on rate of fire for all automatic weapons. Um, they increased the default throw distance of the portable ammo pack and med pack. Um, makes it easier to throw these packs to teammates. I love how it locks on to teammates. It's hilarious to watch. It's oh, like I haven't seen that. A, a teammate runs by, and if they're kind of in the center of your screen and you toss like your, your like little health pack or little ammo pack, it actually will like curve and like land right at their feet, hmm. so they get it immediately. But it was just really glitchy. So like you throw a med pack as someone like runs by you, and all of a sudden it just like deviates and takes off off your screen. It was <laughs> hilarious. I always throw it at the ground. I didn't know we would like aim for people. That's good. To you know, can though. throw it like thirty or forty feet. It's really? pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's it's kind of well. I wonder if we'll be able to do that with C four. We could. No, could you we? can't. That was so great in Bad Company too. That was one of the best things. <laughs> the bunny hopping C four. <laughs> yeah, the bunny hop like throwing C four over a house to kill a tank. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a Battle flat field. cannon. Um, the portable ammo packs now reload two magazines instantly and a total of four magazines per pack over time the player must stay on top of the ammo pack to benefit from all the ammo reloading grenades rpgs and other explosives don't benefit from that um and the revive time has been increased to 10 seconds oh that was obnoxious in the beta. seven yeah it was so um, only seven seconds to get to a dead guy was yeah they've increased the damage of the stinger and the igla to three hits to kill attack choppers they used to do 25 percent damage now they do 35 percent i'm okay with that it should be higher um, they increased the speed of all tow guided missiles to 75 meters per second, up from 50, so make it easier to hit moving targets. I had an APC actually outrun a tow in the beta. It was obnoxious. Oh my. That's th wow. Yeah, that's not good. Um, they increased the sustained Physics. fire. <laughs> they increased the sustained fire accuracy of the coaxial LMG on armored vehicles because it was underpowered. Um, they reduced yes. the, oh, the damage of the 40 mil and 25 millimeter infantry weapons due to armored vehicles to highlight their anti-infantry role. Which, I don't know, I feel like you could shoot everything in your grenade launcher at a tank and it didn't really do much, so... An M320 on the rear engine compartment of a tank would actually do 10 to 14 damage, which was a little bit high. Because you gotta shoot it four times and, I mean, to get it down to 50%, that's not that great. Yeah, but you're, you're an infantryman, you're not an engineer. That's true, it's that's very tank. true. <laughs> um, it worked too well, just a little bit too well. We fixed the issue where the tank main gun didn't hit the center of the crosshair at all times. That was oh so obnoxious. Like so many times, I'd be in a tank battle, carefully line up a shot, trying to hit, like hit the tank's rear armor or side armor, and instead I shoot the stop sign down the street because I'm like off the degree of of the uh, of the UI. It, it was really obnoxious. RPG and Smalls can no longer lock on to laser designated targets because that's not realistic. They just put it in there as a feature, and then people complain. So now it's out. Um, all uh, laser. On a, on a, on a, another side note for the RPG. Yes. Besides their ability to lock on, the worst part of them in the beta was, and this was a confirmed glitch, not a feature, there was no incoming missile tone for the RPGs. So if you heard like a Soflam tone that just kept going and going and going, you're just like, all right, I need to flare because there would just be instant death that would show up all of a sudden. It was mm. terrifying. Like if you heard a Soflam tone that went on for too long, it was time to just, just run. <laughs> That'll hopefully be fixed in the final, final build. The, um, the, Laser designated missiles in the final game will do a maximum of 90% damage to attack and scout helicopters, down from 100%. That's done so helicopters have a chance to use their fire extinguisher countermeasure. Um, but if they have pretty much any damage at all, you'll be able to take them out. Yep. 
Um, and the kill string in the score log appears sooner, making the UI more responsive. But yeah, that's um, that's all of the news really for this week. But so, I guess sorry, uh, go ahead about the beta. Like overall, like th that's that's the change log. But for for those of you guys that actually managed to play it, um, <laughs> there's a lot of talk. I just like just pile on Steve Knight here. <laughs> um, there's a lot of talk during E3 and, and leading up to the actual beta about how similar the games looked. And there was a lot of concern even for me about having two modern warfare battlefields so close together, even sharing some same like base models for weapons and vehicles and stuff. But how do you guys think it played compared to battlefield three? Chris, I'll let you go first. I thought it played really well. I mean, it felt good. I hopped in and for not even playing battlefield much, I jumped right into the flow of it, which was really nice. I, I really enjoyed what I played. That said, it didn't feel very different. So, yeah, it didn't. Um, I like. I thought the weapons felt better. It felt but, like Battlefield three point five to me. Honestly, yeah. pretty much everything about it. Um, hmm. I mean, it didn't. The quality didn't seem to be that much better than the like the end game, the final DLCs and stuff for Battlefield three. I do like some of the weapon rebalancing and things, but I mean, that's all. That's all small stuff that honestly could be patched in an expansion pack, probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I think, I don't know. The question we've kind of been asking ourselves for the last couple of months is like, what could they have done to impress us, like blow us out of the water? Right. And like, I don't know what the answer to that is because the answer is the water. Three, <laughs> uh, <laughs> At least for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a good. little obsessed with the water. <laughs> I'm sorry. The water is cool. I don't know. I, like, it looked good, but it didn't look like amazing. Maybe the, the fact map that it was responsive was really cool. Impressive. Yeah. Maybe the like you know when the town floods or something like I'm sure there's going to be really awesome maps and things. Honestly, where I'm at, um, I mean I will probably be getting the game free in with my AMD reward points. Um, so keep holding on to that hope. <laughs> yep. So I, I don't I'm not going to buy the game on launch day because I can pretty much guarantee it's not going to work right for the first couple of days. Pretty much every multiplayer game is like that. I mean it's you know it's not going to work right at first. So unless if it, if it comes to the AMD rewards program before it's released, I'll go ahead and get it because it's free. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to wait a couple days until the general consensus is that it's stable because around the time it's coming out, I've actually have a, a bunch of other projects going on at the same time. So I'm not really going to have a lot of time to play it anyway. Um, Keep in mind, too, though, that you do get that first DLC for free when you pre-order. Yeah, but if you're going to buy premium, you get it anyway. And you don't get, a discount, on, you don't get a discount on premium if you've already bought it. So it's not really it's not really saving you anything. That's true. That's true. Premium, premium is not is honestly not that good of a deal. I mean, if you bought all the DLC separately, you're not saving that much money going with premium. It does get you the extra features, but I never really found myself liking them that much. I mean, I guess I don't care enough to want like the couple days <laughs> of exclusive exclusivity of DLCs well, and stuff like that. It's, it's artificial too. It's it's it forced. It's yeah, it, making everyone else wait so that you feel exclusive. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't. I don't feel that special when like forty percent of the game's players have premium. <laughs> like, it, it's yeah, not if you're that if you're buying special. premium, pre pre ordering isn't really necessary at all. Yeah. So I'll probably wait and then play it, and then around the time the first DLC is going to come out, if I'm still liking it, I'll buy premium. Um, I'll just see. Like I. I enjoy it when I play it, but you know, I also really enjoy Daisy and I really enjoy Arma and I've got plenty of games to play. So, you know, I, I don't feel the burning need to get Battlefield, although I do enjoy it and I, I imagine I will get it at some point. So I'm going to be the odd man out here and, and say that um, maybe it's just the hours I put in to Battlefield 3, but the Battlefield 4 was so different for me that it took me about... A day and a half and a total of almost 10 hours to get acclimated to the, the changes. Like, the whole game just felt so different to me that at first I was doing horrible. Like, I just could not adjust. I was so used to the, the style of the I saw your KDR. You weapons. were doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the first few You had, days, like, though, a 400 score per minute, like, within the first day. <laughs> well, at, at the end of the first day, yeah. But, man, that, uh, that first morning when I played uh, before work and then that, that first lunch break, my KDR was, like, Point four. <laughs> oh my. I, I, I really had to adjust and I do like all the improvements. You guys mentioned the weapons. Uh Joel, who also really only played Battlefield when we played, jumped into the beta and and just said that like, this this feels like totally different. Like I, I can just jump right into this. This feels great as far as recoil and accuracy and just that stuff was definitely all better. It was. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that surprised me because I jumped in... Normally when I jump into Battlefield 3 without having played in a while, my KDR <clears> takes <throat> a little while to get back up to positive. You know, yeah. it's usually when I've been playing about, you know, 1.3, 1.4 on a good day. Um, but I jumped into Battlefield 4 and it was actually right there without any learning curve. So I was like, oh my, wow. Nice. And I haven't played shooters, like I haven't played shooters like Battlefield 3 in a couple months now, so. Yeah, I think the the label of Battlefield 3.5 is fair. I, I mean, it's not... It's not the improvement from Battlefield 2 to 3, obviously. Right. But there are a massive amount of changes, and the entire game does feel different. So it, it may be Battlefield 3.5, but it is still a very different game. It's definitely a worthy update. It's just, is it $110 worthy? You know, A valid question. Uh, that, that's a <laughs> lot of money. I guess if you step back and look at it and say, all right, will I, will I be playing this Battlefield for two years again? And will I get, you know, 300 hours out of it, out of it again, just like I did with Battlefield 3? Maybe maybe that'll help spread the money thinner. <laughs> it it does. It does. It's just, you know, I, I haven't decided yet. I mean, I, I really do enjoy Battlefield. I don't want to take anything away from it. But I just, I wasn't blown away by the beta. I enjoyed it. It was good. But I don't think they can do it like that every two years. I think they're no, going to have no, to not make at all. stuff they, up. I think... They get kind of a free pass with this one because Battlefield 3 was a, a next-gen title. This is, the Windows, to... this is the Windows 7 to Battlefield 3's Vista. <laughs> Basically, yeah. This is, this is all the stuff they wanted to do but couldn't in Battlefield 3. So they get kind of a free pass for this one, but we need some, some new stuff coming from here on out, I think. Yeah. Um... I, I, as far as premium goes, on a side note, and I am not being paid to say this, uh, I'm actually planning on, on buying premium from Green Man Gaming. Have you guys used that before? I have. Yeah. I have. Um, you can actually get either cash back or, or points back from that. And I didn't realize I bought some Skyrim DLC and some other stuff last year on Green Man Gaming. I have $8 of like cash back for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get premium for 42 bucks. I'm like, well, that takes some of the edge off. Some. Yeah. Yeah. And if you buy more stuff, like if you already have some, some cash back, then like check for other retailers that are offering bundled deals, stuff like that, before you just dro drop like 50 bucks in Origin just straight. For uh, for premium, yeah, definitely. Um, now with Battlefield Four, as we're winding this thing down to a close, Dave, I believe you have some exciting news about Battlefield Four. What might that news be? It's all about them consoles. <laughs> oh, you you spilled that part too soon. I was gonna drag that part out. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't don't worry. Joel has already laughed at me every single day because of this. But um. At the end of the month, either on the uh, 30th or 31st, I don't know my exact travel date yet, I will be flying to London to defend America's honor in the first Battlefield 4 tournament, which will be held uh, in London on the Xbox One, unfortunately yeah, for me. <laughs> console of champions. Um, I don't feel totally alone. I, I always joke that the last cons console I bought was the GameCube in 2002. I still have it somewhere. Um... I played Halo and all, you know, in high school, LAN parties and stuff like that. So I'm not, I'm not totally like out of date, but I've been a PC gamer primarily since, since the GameCube. And so I now have to play competitively in a, uh, in a tournament that will be live streamed on Xbox live to oh, defend baby. my country's honor. So that's uh, more than a little terrifying, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Who else do you have picking up the slack with you? Um, I'm not alone on the PC side of things. Uh, poor Manus 701. I was uh, I was playing with him some on Sunday, and um, I was gonna actually practice with Joel's Xbox 360 controller right here. I, I was gonna try it out, but after like two minutes of it, I said, "Screw that! I'm enjoying the beta with the mouse while it's still here." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> poor Manus kept playing with the controller, and he went zero and twelve. Mm. He got like three hit markers. Poor guy was so frustrated. I mean, I I can definitely feel it because. Um, when you're playing with a controller, especially against key other keyboard and mouse users, you have to totally change your strategy. Now, ever since Bad Company 2, I've been a very, very aggressive Battlefield player. Uh, actually, I, I blame Bad Company 2 for that primarily just because if you were aggressive enough, thanks to the extra health, like you could really rack up some, some kills and some points and, and work with your squad and just push, push, push. But with a controller, you can't count on your aim to get you out of tight spots. Like in Battlefield 3 or 4 with a mouse and keyboard, if I charge in and I've, I'm like out of cover or I'm ambushed by multiple guys, 
I'd say a lot of the time I can count on my accuracy to get me out of that fight alive, if barely alive. But with a controller, you have to set up your encounters to win. Like you need to be aiming at where they're going to be coming from. You have to use your map. Your, your map. You have to move more carefully, and that'll probably help make me a better player overall. I think is trying to slow down a bit and play a bit more tactically, and not just depend on the mouse and keyboard. And on a side note, I, I'm definitely not alone. Uh, Manus is coming, uh, Dasko, a, a couple other uh, of the PC-only YouTuber guys are going to be on our team. And we are being very organized. We're going to have it set up so that if you're not experienced with controllers, you'll be doing things like ammo supply, guarding flags, stuff that maybe where the accuracy isn't like the main thing you have to worry about. And we do have some competitive Xbox players on our team too, so I'm excited to see that. Cool. Including some, some competitive uh, jet flyers, too. I want to see that on, on consoles. Now, you should be able, like, if you can get into a jet for the tournament, you should be fine, right? <laughs> okay. Funny story. While <laughs> trying out the controller in the beta on, on the PC version, I grabbed a transport helicopter, and no one else had got in with me. I'm like, all right, well, I'll try flying a helicopter with a controller for the first time. And I'm, like, flying towards the sea flag, like, easy, easy. Like, two teammates spot on me. I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad. I got this. And I start dipping too far. I'm like, oh, I better pull out. Yep, I'm definitely going further into this dive, and right into the water we go. So, no, I would not count on my flying abilities. Although, I did do some armor with the controller, and I had a, a 2.5, 2.3 KDR match playing all armor with the controller, because that's a lot more about positioning and how you engage versus, like, exact accuracy. And right. tanks are bigger targets, too, so I could probably handle armor pretty well, I think. Cool. Well, but yeah, we, um, we wish you the best of luck. <laughs> November 1st, I don't have any details on the exact stream locations other than just Xbox Live, but it will be broadcast. It is America versus all of Europe, apparently. <laughs> so <laughs> if you guys would, please root for the colonies. Do you know anyone who's on the European team? <laughs> Need to um, make you a casual shenanigan shirt. <laughs> I actually, I'm wearing my, my Battlefield 3 shirt tonight. I found that on a shelf tonight. I'm like, maybe this will get me pumped up for controllers and Battlefield and stuff. I, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I may have to name, name drop you guys a few times, like, just obnoxiously everywhere. Do it. Do it. Um, okay. <laughs> of course, so, Jeremiah's like, do it. Do it now. <laughs> of course I am. Uh, I'm shameless. Why would I not be? Um, does anyone have any closing thoughts as we, as we wind the podcast down? Just don't screw this up, Dave. We won't let you back <laughs> in the country. Everyone's watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was kind of funny because the tournament is definitely more lighthearted. You know, it has some really funny promo videos where the U.S. one has like the fife going in the background and uh, some some gun jokes, and then the European one has like a um, a brave heart spoof, like he's like wearing blue face paint and all. <laughs> but man, people in the comments were like ripping into each other, like oh, like you American faggots are going to die. Just like really horrible. Guys, stuff. We, we already had Bring a in all the Xbox players. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yep. We already had a tournament between America and Europe many years ago. America won. <laughs> yeah. War was a long time is ago, this guys. The, is this the second revolutionary war? I'm not saying it's not. So, Dave, no pressure. That was one of the nicer comments, too. So I might die. I might get, like, shivved over in London. They, they don't have weapons over there. You'll be fine. Oh, no, no, no. They, don't, they don't have guns. Yeah, so you have giant roving gangs of street youths. Yes. <laughs> Watch out. Youths? But you're, corn, you're a corn-fed Virginia boy. <laughs> An unarmed corn-fed Virginia boy. <laughs> actually on that note uh, did you guys hear the story of, I think it was last month where one of the I think it was the the prime minister's daughter or granddaughter or something got mugged at gunpoint in London no, that's a little yeah. awkward <laughs> 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 like handguns have been illegal for like 15 years and she gets mugged at gunpoint not that we're getting political on the podcast or anything <laughs> I'm just worried about getting if mugged by you if you want to be a part of the show write in casual shenanigans at gmail.com uh, at casual shenaniga on twitter uh, at Germ Gaming, at Evil Viking on Twitter, Evil Viking 13 on YouTube. Chris and Steve are kind of off the grid. They don't want you to follow them. But if you guys ever have something that you want us to plug on here, we certainly can. Um, like your, your match.com profile, you know, anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't think any ladies listen to this podcast. Uh, but anyway, 
Gosh, I'm really losing my train of thought a lot tonight. You ever have that feeling like where you're talking and you know you need to stop talking, but your mouth just <laughs> keeps going and you're like, wait, the things I'm saying are bad and dumb. So basically Joel then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow. man, he's out here. I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah, you can't Dang kick it. him while he's down. Oh, I want to plug one thing before I go. Just one thing. It's not mine thing that I'm plugging. Uh, you need, and this is not a paid sponsorship, by the way. I feel like I should just probably put that as a disclaimer. Um, <laughs> we've, said that, we've said that a lot tonight. This is getting really suspicious, <laughs> If someone actually. wants to pay us, I will sell out so quick. You don't <laughs> oh, yeah, know. yeah. Let that be out in the open. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, backing up your computer is important. But a lot of people don't. Um, it's one thing to lose all of your illegally downloaded music and movies. <laughs> yeah, I go. <laughs> but, if you have, but if you have pictures of like your family and school documents and projects you've worked on and things, if they're not backed up, you're an idiot. And if they're not backed up in more is this than one a, place... This really does sound like an ad. Is this just an Jeremiah PSA or something? I feel, I feel very strongly about this because I have to help lots of people who I get, well, I set their computer up, I set them up with a backup, and then two years later, they have some sort of problem, like they download freecookies.exe, and all of a sudden their computer doesn't work. And, um, and they come to me for help, and they're upset because I can't recover their data because they weren't running the backup. Um, or they just didn't bother with it, or they asked my recommendation and then never did it or something like Can that. Can I so- use Joel as an example again here? <laughs> <laughs> if we must. So last year, Joel uh, did some videography for a friend's wedding, like out of the country, like a big, nice, fancy wedding. Came home, dumped all the footage. The next day, the hard drive would not show up at the computer. And all he heard was like, click, 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 coming from inside. And he had just wiped all of his camera cards. Ugh. So uh, remember, boys and girls. He didn't have backups? No. <laughs> all right. This is how I back up my stuff. Your mileage may vary. I have a two terabyte drive that holds most of my storage stuff. And then I have a second two terabyte drive, which is a clone of the first one. I have a two terabyte external drive sitting on top of my shelf that I sync about once a week with it. I have another two terabyte portable drive that rides in my bag with me. That bag leaves the house. Every time I leave the house, that bag is with me. Like if I'm leaving for five minutes, that bag is with me. That's in case my domicile burns down. <laughs> the stuff, the stuff isn't gone. Offsite backup guys. It is. I have, I have another one, another two terabyte portable drive in a safe at my dad's house. And I've just added another level um crash plan crash plan is a company that for a very small fee each month you can back up your stuff onto their servers automatically so you just set it up you tell it to go and it just runs in the background forever um you know unless you pause it or stop it or whatever but it's unlimited data unlimited versions of that data you can have it check for new versions and like save new versions every 15 minutes if you want to um it uses very little of your cpu and you can restrict what folders it backs up, what um, drives. You can do all kinds of stuff. Now, it's like $4 per month for a single computer. I bought the $13 a month family plan. If I pay per year, it's $10, I believe. And I get 10 computers. So if you have like a family for 10 bucks a month, you can get your entire family backed up. Um, that's what I did. I went to my in-laws' computers and my brother-in-laws' computer, like my wife's computer, her work computer. Because her work, she works for a major company doing web design, and they don't make them work off a server. The designers are allowed to keep everything on their laptops, uh, oh, which strikes no. me as a hilariously, hilariously bad idea. Which reminds so, me, I need to pull all my current work at work over to the network drive next week because I've been working <laughs> out of my my documents folder uh, like, a, like a bad child. Um, so <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. always beating up on the designers at work for. Uh, to be fair, CryEngine has dependent files that hate network drives. <laughs> <laughs> there is a reason for it. Ish. Uh, you don't have local backup? Uh, no, I don't. Mm. We're supposed to use network storage for everything. Mm. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I would recommend that highly. I'd highly, highly recommend it. Unless you have the world's worst internet connection, in which case you probably don't want to bother. But uh, Once again, this is not an endorsement. <laughs> it, it really is not an endorsement, but I, it's been working but so well totally for me. Awesome. If you don't have a backup, get a backup, seriously. I mean, it's, yes. it, it's super cheap. If you're paying for Netflix or if you buy one coffee per month, I mean, if you, if you can spare 4 or $5 in a month, and if you can't, you need to... What's know, the do, Amazon do one that's just like cents? There's a amazon service is it like uh, amazon cloud backup or something 
Yeah, something like that. But it's I like it's cents it's free. per gig or something like that. But yeah, and it's not it's not as good. No, but if you're looking for cheap, that's, that's true. That's true. Also, if you're buying right coffee, there. stop and make your own coffee because that's a giant money pit. Just Take stop it from drinking coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I missed it. What did he say? I, I missed it. Stop drinking coffee. You're, why are you leaving me hanging? Thank I, you. I did it. I did it. <laughs> okay, 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 Steve. So, Steve, this is good. This is good. We can all gang up on Dave. Steve, why do you think people should not drink coffee? Because I was addicted to coffee for years, and it was horrible because mornings when I couldn't have it, I was a hard person to be around. Have I talked to you about my caffeine addiction? No. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Here we go again. Dave. Yeah, Chris has heard this story quite a few times. Steve, Sorry, the, the, the correct Chris, answer, by the way, is chance, to... <laughs> anytime I have a chance no, to save a, a life, I take it. It's an important thing. I understand. <laughs> but you've heard this story quite a few times. Um, so here's the deal. Um... When I, I, I started working landscaping when I was 15 um, for a, a landscaping company. So we were riding around the truck all day. You know, it gets hot where we live. So I always brought Gatorade and water with me. You know, uh, drink the Gatorade a little bit just to keep your electrolytes up um, and then drink the water for hydration because you don't really need Gatorade nearly as much as Gatorade would like you to think you do. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> a, a, little, a little bit of Gatorade can be helpful um, by a little bit. I mean, like, you know, maybe a cup every four hours. <laughs> maybe but uh so anyway but you know you find yourself getting tired maybe at the end of the day or whatever and i was in really good shape at the time um i did uh competitive swimming and i ran cross country and i exercised out like lifted weights and i worked outside doing landscaping sweating all day so i was i was in pretty good shape so i could eat anything like i could eat as much of whatever i wanted and I got into some bad habits, and one of those was I would start drinking like a caffeinated soda in the evenings when I was um, getting tired, or in the mornings when I was tired, or during the day. And it kind of got to the point, if you guys remember Vault, Vault was both the <laughs> best and the worst soda ever because they sold it for like 60% of the price of a normal soda for the per ounce, and it was pretty much Mountain Dew with 150% of the caffeine. Um <laughs> I got to the point after about a year and a half where I was on the way to work, I was buying a two liter of vault and I Ugh. forget the water. There was no water and there was no Gatorade. I was carrying it. Well, I, sometimes I'd have Gatorade if I mixed it double strength, but I was carrying <laughs> the two liter of vault around and I would just chug that all day long. And when that ran out, every time we'd hit up a gas station, which usually you work in landscape and you do probably once a day, um, I would buy a couple energy drinks just to keep me going for the last couple hours. And it got to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. I had a little, my portable cooler by my bed in the morning so I could have an ice cold Mountain Dew just to get that shock of sugar into your system to get oh. me out of bed long enough for the caffeine to get into my system because I couldn't leave the house till I had a nice jolt of it. So I couldn't, bad. I couldn't go more than three or four hours or I started getting massive headaches. Like I could sit there and in the course of five minutes, I just have a headache come out of nowhere. <laughs> drink maybe like six ounces of a caffeinated drink and within five ten minutes it went away like it was bad like i had um i would just sit at home in the evenings i'd be so tired i could barely think straight and i would just like be trembling constantly um <laughs> it was bad i mean it was just bad so Man, I, finally, I really want a mountain dew night right now <laughs> i decided i needed to stop cold turkey so i just did like one day i had my ceremonial last vault and then quit drinking them so i didn't have any for the rest of the day i just popped ibuprofen like crazy um, the next, uh, not more than the recommended dosage. Uh, <laughs> the next morning I woke up, um, with a fever and the shakes and I couldn't get out of bed and I couldn't see straight. Like my vision was all swimmy and it took me about two days to where I wasn't sick. Uh, and then I had horrible headaches for about a week and a half. Uh, and then I was fine. And now, um, I have maybe one or two caffeinated drinks each week. I, I mean, I, I like, I like Dr. Pepper, so I don't drink. I only drink diet drinks now, um, and I, uh, I only have, like, maybe one or two a week. So, the caffeine now is actually useful, because if I need it, I can drink even, like, a Coke, like a Diet Coke, something with not that much caffeine, and it, it'll perk me right up, like if I have a long car drive at night or something. So, caffeine can be useful, but there's no substitute for proper amounts of sleep, drinking lots of water, and having a healthy diet. Those are definitely the best things. Amen. So I, I rag on Dave. I know I rag on Dave a lot. But uh, 
It's just because we care about you, buddy. I can survive without coffee. Believe it you, or not, I have gone that. entire days without coffee. An not, entire, not recently. An entire day. Great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't I don't require the booster pack in the morning. <laughs> I just prefer I, I it. I, you're nowhere close to where I am, but I know you like your coffee. That's the only reason I bring it up. But um, for any of you out there, if you say I need the caffeine though because it gives me energy, it does not. It robs energy from you. Uh, it makes you feel perky for a little bit. It's because you're dependent on it because it's a drug. Caffeine per milligram is about as potent and about as addictive as cocaine, which is illegal. Um, the difference is with cocaine, they're not allowed to mix it into drinks, <laughs> but if you snorted, so if you snorted pure caffeine, it's pretty much the same thing. Caffeine is more addictive than quite a few illegal drugs. Um, it, it boggles my mind how that's legal and some other things aren't, you know, I'm, I'm of the mindset where like, if you want to do something to yourself that doesn't hurt other people, fine, I don't care, but I don't understand how that is legal and other things aren't. Caffeine is, can be incredibly destructive. Um, so can sugar. I have a lot of things I could talk about about this, but um, it, on it, that it, tangent, go, go, going back to say, my original point, so, wait, wait, I, real quick, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But, and if you say, if you say, if you say, I can drink the caffeinated drinks because they don't affect me, you don't feel like they affect you because there's so much of it in your system. Already. That is very true. That is yeah, 100% that is, that true. Is true. <laughs> it's a drug. You are not a special snowflake. That it does. I'm not saying you, Dave. I'm talking to the listener in general. Um, I can take it. (laughs) If you feel like it doesn't affect you, it's not because you are a special snowflake who's immune to the effects of it. It's a drug. It alters your body. It's like a mind altering substance. You don't get to pick whether or not it affects you. (laughs) If you have a brain, it affects you. Sorry, Dave. Back to your point. My my original point was just being once again, a a cheapskate slash, I don't know, budget person. Do not, do not buy coffee from anywhere. Yeah, like I, I have coworkers ridiculous. that go for a coffee every single day, <laughs> and oh, I buy my works. coffee from what? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I buy my coffee from Amazon. I have Amazon Prime, so I, I use it for a whole bunch of stuff. But I get my coffee delivered automatically once a month. Ground coffee. I have the pot set at night to go in the morning. I have a, a travel mug I wash out once a day. And my cups of coffee are super, super cheap, and it tastes so much better. I get, to, I, get to, I get to make it like exactly how I want it. It's definitely the way to go. Don't spend your money on coffee. Don't. Definitely don't. And the same thing goes like at my wife's work. They all go out to eat every day, pretty much everyone on her team. And that's in a city, so you're eating like at least six or seven bucks to eat. That's yep. every single day. I like, have a very strict system. I go out to lunch once a week, exactly once a week. And so we, we gave my wife a little bit of a budget just so she could go out to eat because you know, it's like team building and stuff. She didn't want to be the person exactly. who, who like I'm in, the, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. She, she didn't want to bring like Tupperware into the restaurant or something. I would do that. I have I have low standards for most things, but I live in a camper. I'm so um, proud, Jeremiah. But but we gave her a little bit of a budget just so she could go out to eat with them sometimes. But I mean, they go out to eat like all the time and it's so ridiculous. Um, the same can be said for a lot of things that people do. Like I have a I have a decent income or my wife and I together with our freelance things and our day jobs, we have a decent income and I would not consider blowing as much money on going out to eat and coffee and other ridiculous uh. stuff. Like going out to see movies a couple times a week or once a week or going out to eat all the time. I mean, it, yeah. We, all that to say, back up your computers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Steve, do you have anything you want to rant about for a minute? This is episode 26. <laughs> do you have anything you want to rant about, Steve? Episode. <laughs> no, you, you covered it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Hey, Steve, you want to talk about healthcare? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> not, not now. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Join us so next guys. week for Jeremiah and Steve argue about our healthcare system. <laughs> Really, it just ought to be called Jeremiah Argues with Everybody. I, 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 th- I think it's just a flaw in my character. That's what I'm going to assume it is. I'm like, you can't just think something without being contested. <laughs> Don't worry, Jeremiah. It's just one of many. I did try to fight you earlier over a 100-watt increase to a power supply for almost no money. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and blame that one on this guy. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we appreciate you guys. And... Uh, you know, <laughs> stay casual. Ultra Grunt says this podcast has become an infomercial. <laughs> you ruined my sign off. You ruined it. You ruined that it. That was worth it. Uh, fine. We love you. And Ultra stay Grunt. casual. We love you unless you're weird. Stay casual. <laughs>